We are finished with our GIF animation project. We are moving on to our next assignment, assignment four. It is a vector logo assignment or a vector graphic symbol. And there is a, a link to some slides I've prepared for you that will give you the understanding of vector versus the raster imagery, the pixel-based imagery we've been using, which in this video made by a, a digital honors student uh, refers to rasters as bitmaps, which is the old name for them. But that means pixel-based. And then it goes to defining what a logo is, right? A logo is different than an illustration. We'll be doing illustrations next, right? Illustrations have a lot of personality to them. They can have a lot of detail to them. They can be really colorful. They can be sometimes enigmatic and confusing and engaging in that way. Logos should first and foremost always be clear. A symbol that you can't, un you can't read does not make a good symbol. Right? Think of branding on bathroom doors or street signage. You want it to be engaging. You don't want it to be just so cliched and so obvious and familiar that you don't, it doesn't catch your attention. So that's where making it your own comes in. And most importantly, you want it to be versatile versatile from one file and that's why we're going to use a vector file you want to be able to put it on the sides of trucks you want to be able to put it on billboards you want to make it the size of a skyscraper to cover that that mural in LA on Sunset Strip or in Fifth Avenue in New York and you want it to to be readable and workable from that same file on a business card you know at a quarter of an inch tall or less to do that well takes usually all these steps this is called a, a production workflow, and we'll be learning more about that as we get into our final project. It has to do with knowing what your job is, <laughs> you know, knowing what you're making a symbol for. I'm going to give you that right now. That's called the brief, and you summarize it in one sentence. You are doing your own version of the Northeast Lakeview College campus mascot, Nico the Nighthawk, as a graphic symbol in black and white and in color. Then you're going to research. So how should you start? You can research by Googling Northeast Lakeview College mascot Nico. Or you don't even need to put mascot in there. And it's Nico the Nighthawk. And then let's go to images because we're talking about graphic symbols. So you'll see lots of pictures of our mascot in the costume. But what came before the mascot costume was the mascot design. And this is the official design. So this is a good thing to save just because it's reference for you. You need to know what Nico the Nighthawk is. There's a Facebook page for Nico the Nighthawk. You can dive deep as much as you want. What you'll notice is that Nico the Nighthawk is colorful. But it is a graphic symbol designed so that if you adjust the color, and you will see variations that aren't colored, we can actually still recognize everything even when it's all just black shape. So your graphic symbol needs to work as just a black shape version. And then you can always add color. Because if it can work in black shape, then it can also work inverted, which means it can work as versatile as any image can at any size always perfect quality on dark backgrounds on light backgrounds no matter what in any single color right that's just from your black shape graphic symbol what is my critique of this mascot why do we need to make our own versions because the college insisted on putting its official campus logo on the mascot which is a bad idea because that official campus logo is not readable at all the different ways that this graphic symbol is used. And it doesn't really fit with it. So we're going to come up with our own that does not have any type in it at all. So another part of your brief is that this is a pictorial image. This is not a logo type. This is not a combined mark. Make sense? I'll let you use some letters in it if you want, like NLC. But other than that, and you don't have to, it's better to just leave it as a purely graphic image. So let's look at some. What are we going to do next? Now you know your brief. You're going to research. You're going to think about it. 
You're going to find references that you find inspiring. My inspiration for this semester for this are these images, especially this one and this one. <laughs> I want kind of a clean image. I'm thinking bird-like. I'm trying to think how I can do the knight's helmet in an interesting way or maybe some like javelins or swords. Maybe sword. Sword is cool. So I'm thinking kind of tattoo design. And I want it to be really clean. Almost like a tribal tattoo. So it's never go out of style. No one ever regrets getting a tribal tattoo. So this is what you need to do. Because the next phase is sketching and conceptualizing. And you notice how that's the biggest circle? <laughs> that's because that's where you, you swing the biggest. And so I'm going to force you with our proving ground. So if you go to assignments and you go to proving ground two, and you click on where it says learn thumbnailing and divergent thinking, I also have a link to the slides there. You're going to sketch your idea for Nico as your own personal graphic symbol in three different ways. And these are the three different ways, and they can be very loose sketches. They are centrally and symmetrically, where your eye goes into the middle of the logo and then jumps out. It's a very balanced logo or graphic symbol design. Second, you're going to sketch it dynamically like the Nike swoosh, so that the eye is meant to move through it at speed, using diagonals, using curves. Third, this is going to be the most difficult for many of you, and if you haven't taken a design class or an art appreciation class, this might be kind of a new concept to you, but you're going to be playing with positive and negative space. That means that your black shapes are also going to make a new shape with the empty space around it. So in this case, I have the head of a Nighthawk, I actually am quite fond of this one. But I have the negative space of a knight and his kind of plume being cut out from that black shape. And a little bit of an in there. And if you notice, I have like NLC hidden in the helmet here and NLC here and the in here. But you don't need to use any letters at all. Do not use more than this. Do not try to fit link view into a graphic symbol. You can always add text to a graphic symbol after the fact. Okay, then you're going to refine your sketch. So I took this one and I refined it. That is going to be for your assignment after your proving ground. Your refined sketch cannot just be line art. It needs to actually show what gets shaded in because this same line art, and we can do this on the computer in different ways, but that same line art can output this or it can output this. It just depends which shapes get filled in. This is like cutting something out of black construction paper. And that's very different than just lines. And you'll notice, if I zoom in and out on this, you see that that black shape here is readable for a lot longer than the line art is. So that's why we call these black shape logos or black shape vectors. Once you have your refined sketch, it can be as loose as you want. We build it in a vector program like Illustrator or like vector.com and we cut it out using vector shapes, using vector paths, using anchors, using the pen tool to get very, very clean images. So I include this one. This is not my own work, but this shows the logic behind this. This is all made with basic shapes. It's one approach and it plays with positive and negative space for something that's fairly dynamic, but mostly plays with positive and negative space in the finished image. All right, and then I give you some tips in Illustrator once we start using it. And vector.com, it will help as well, like pin tool tips and things. Let's go back to the assignment. Oh, this is maybe the most helpful slide for sketching. This one. So you want it to be clear, engaging, and versatile. But then here are some professional examples of th these three different approaches. Central symmetrical. Target is absolutely a central symmetrical logo, right? It has absolute symmetry in every way. Shell is a bisymmetrical logo. It means it's a mirror image side to side. NBC is almost a bisymmetrical logo. 
because the colors are different side to side and the peacock's beak is on one side but not the other. All, not the other. These are all central symmetrical though. They don't need to be perfectly symmetrical in order to fit. They just need to lead the eye into the center and then let it out again. Everything balances from the center. Dynamic, like the Nike swoosh, like the Rio de Janeiro Olympic symbol, like the Rolling Stones tongue, like the Twitter bird, they're all meant to move the eye and give you a sense of direction as you look at them. And then plays with positive and negative space. Notice how the white space around the dark space creates a separate image. The only one that's not true of is the World Wildlife Federation's panda, but I include it here because it's such a nicely balanced positive and negative space logo. And whenever you don't close your shapes, and yet they are assumed, I consider that a play of positive and negative space as well. But you can see the city that's made by the negative space of the key. You can see the couple that's made of the negative space of the heart. You can see the rhinoceros and the giraffe that's made of the negative space of the elephant. You can see the S that's made of the negative space of the U.S. of the U and the A. Uh, our San Antonio Zoo just had a very expensive rebranding over the last couple of years. And you will see this sticker around, which is a play of positive and negative space. And then that gets put into this logo type as well. This was their old logo, which is a clever combination of the Alamo and a gazelle, but they actually don't have gazelles. So maybe this new one's better because they do have rhinos and they do have giraffes. I don't know. They don't have sloths, but that would be cool. So how are you going to do this? You are going to research what Nico the Nighthawk can be for you. And then you are going to draw it very loosely in thumbnail sketches. And if you need a review of what thumbnail sketches are, again, if you haven't taken design or haven't taken art appreciation, it means that they are quick, small sketches where you can try out a lot of ideas quickly. You're not trying to be super detailed. You want to reduce overthinking. You keep it just suggesting the complexity that's to come. This will be followed by a refined sketch later. But first, you're going to draw it in each of these ways in order to meet this proving ground. This was my example of it. This was for a semester when we did kind of restaurant logos. And I came up with a barbecue restaurant called Fork and Bull. And so this one's mostly symmetrical. This one's mostly dynamic. And this one is a play of positive and negative space. In retrospect, this was kind of my favorite, but this was the one I worked up in class. The things you have to do to get credit for this proving ground, you need to do this by next class, and you want to come with your sketches, is to, to do at least three sketches that are loose thumbnails, and they need to showcase all three approaches, so central, symmetrical, dynamic, and a play of positive and negative space. You can post more than three, but you need, within however many sketches you post, you need those three things to be clearly visible, even if they're failed attempts at it. Then, the second part is you're going to need to write a critique response to at least one other class member, telling them your preference for which one you think is most effective, has the most potential. Whether it's their symmetrical one, their dynamic one, or their positive negative space one. And I will do that too. So you'll have input, not just your own taste, but some input from some outside eyes about what, what they think has potential to be good. Then we move on to our actual assignment. And your assignment starts with a refined sketch. So this sketch used the central symmetrical one and did the kind of a zombified fast food, Colonel Sanders. And then you're going to make it with vectors as a black shape, and then we're going to do a color version of it as well. Here are past student examples. This was some of his inspirational reference. It's always good to have inspirational reference. This was for a semester we did angry elementals. So he wanted angry water. This was this, the re refined sketch. It's central symmetrical. This was the black shape. And then this was the color variation. So I'm going to put right here our theme for the semester. 